It's in drugs. Okay. How could that have happened? That was my point. You're not, it's not just simply you don't recall. Just uh, How many times do I have to say it? I'm just trying to make sure your testimony is clear. Well, if it can't be any clearer than I've never taken drugs, then incidents like that could never have happened. Okay. How clear is that? Okay. I think it's clear. Well, let me, can I ask you some additional questions as a follow-up on that? Sure. <clears throat> uh, you have never taken any performance-enhancing drug in connection with your cycling career? Correct. Uh, and that would include any substance that's ever been banned, is that fair to say? Correct. Okay. Well, why don't you give me the definition of what you're using when you say you've never taken any performance-enhancing substances? What would that include? Anything that banned? would have included, well, it would include anything on the banned list. Okay. Uh, um, for example, would, would that include that you've never um, used your own blood for doping purposes, for example? Absolutely. That, that would be banned. Okay. Uh, I'm not trying to agitate you. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure your testimony is clear. Okay. Okay? All right. Uh, I understand that you find allegations regarding that to be agitating, but I'm just asking you questions, okay? I'm not trying to, to, to insult you. Okay. All right. Fair enough? Fair enough. Okay. Um, uh, did you speak with Stephanie McElvain before her deposition? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, when did you talk to her? Mm, I don't recall. She called me about her neighbor. Okay. Uh, was this a neighbor that needed some help or was this the neighbor that has cancer? Correct. Okay. Uh, what did you talk with her about other than the personal things related to her neighbor? That's it. Did you talk about her upcoming deposition? No. Did you talk about any of the testimony from Kathy Lamond, Greg Lamond, uh, or the Andrews? No. Did anyone, to your knowledge, at your direction, contact Ms. McElvain regarding her deposition? Not that I know of. Okay, so Mr. Stapleton or Mr. Nags or someone at their direction, to your knowledge, didn't call Ms. McElvain Not to discuss? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, what is your business relationship with Oakley? I am at, are you done with this? Yes. Okay. I'm an endorsed athlete, have been for a long time. Okay. You continue to have a contract with Oakley? Mm, correct. Does Ms. Is Ms. McElvain continue to be a representative for Oakley that has responsibility for you? Um, I think so. And how frequently do you have contact with her regarding your business with Oakley? I don't know, a few times a year. Obviously before key events, you know, they need to make sure that you know, the proper equipment or if they have something new, they would like for you to try it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. She testified that she was in, that she remembered being in the conference room or the big room watching the football game. Do you recall her being there? Uh, I recall her being in Indiana. I don't you know, exactly remember who was in the room or who wasn't in the room. Okay. I remember watching the football game. Um, I take it from your testimony that there would not be, to your knowledge, any medical records regarding your treatment at the Indiana Hospital that would report or record any use by you of performance enhancing drugs, correct? Well, if I've never taken performance enhancing drugs, I never would have told a doctor that I took performance enhancing drugs, therefore they never would have written down in any records that I'd taken performance enhancing drugs. Uh, therefore, do you have any opposition to, to providing my clients with a release to obtain those medical records? Well, I'm sure, I'm sure, we, I'm sure we do, yeah. I don't think anybody... That's something, this, that, I, that's something that I will uh, take under advisement. Yeah. That we would request access to those mm -hmm. under the protective order, and I'll even add that uh, we don't have to take copies of them. We can review them. And All right. Your, okay. your request is duly Thank noted. you. Thank you. Um, have you spoken to Mr. Andrews since his deposition? No. Has anyone at your uh, request or at your direction spoken to Mr. Andrews regarding his deposition? I don't know what he said. Hmm? You said you didn't know? I said I don't know. Okay. How, how are you kept up to speed regarding this legal proceeding? Is it through Mr. Herman or through Mr. Stapleton? Uh, a little of both, but to be honest, I don't follow much because I'm busy with other things and this is really a distraction, but I okay. get bits and pieces. 
Okay. I, I'm just trying to find out if 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 Mr. Stapleton tells you what's going on versus Mr. Herman or both. Ah, it's a mix of both. Or Mr. Breen or Mr. Breen. Sorry. Never called you Mr. Breen. <laughs> I didn't mean to leave you out of that list of distinguished individuals. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> sir. Um, can you tell us when you first started going to Dr. Ferrari as a trainer or a coach? Uh, we met in sometime in the mid '90s. I don't know if that means going to or what do you mean? But How did you meet him? What were the circumstances surrounding that? Uh, we were in Southern California somewhere at a training camp, Chris and I, and he was there as well with a lot of other athletes, and our paths crossed. <coughs> When did you first start uh, going to him for, for, for training or coaching, as opposed to just simply meeting him? Um, we started doing some testing, you know, and or just after that time. I don't, I don't recall exactly, but so we've been in the mid. It would been in the mid '90s before your cancer treatment. Yeah, you were using him. And how, how does it work, Mr. Armstrong? Do, do you actually retain him as a coach? Is it? Is it just odd consultations that you go see him? I mean, can you explain to, to me yeah, how there's it works no out? strict schedule. It's just you know, based on availability. If you want to uh, run a test or something, set something up. Uh, I, I have read articles about Dr. Ferrari that, that he designs or, or essentially takes over the training process and does a comprehensive training program. Mm -hmm. is, is that somewhat accurate based upon your experience? Uh, I think he does. I think he has a business of that. I think he does that for a lot of everyday cyclists and probably some other athletes. Is that how it was with you? In the sense, did he did he take over the whole training process, or was he just sort of an ad hoc consultant? Um, well, my process has always been one that involves a lot of people: Chris Carmichael, Johan Bernil, everybody involved in the team. It's not just a. Uh, it would be unfair to say there's an athlete-coach relationship and nothing else. So I would say more of an advisor. Okay. Has Mr. Carmichael remained, been your coach since that same time period, the mid-90s? Correct. And Mr. Bruneal, what relationship does he play as far as the coaching or training? What's his role? He's the, what they call the director sportif, or the, basically the, the best description would be the head coach. Um, how often were you seen or visiting with Dr. Ferrari prior to your cancer treatment? I don't know, not much. A few times a year, for example? A few times a year. And, and how is Dr. Ferrari paid? Is it paid per visit, per training session? I don't recall exactly. I mean, based on, yeah, based on time commitment and do you have to separately negotiate that fee arrangement with him? Um, I don't remember. I mean, it was, it was not so strict. Well, what about after your cancer treatment? I mean, you continue to, to use Dr. Ferrari as a trainer and a coach, is that right? As an advisor. As an advisor. What's the difference between advisor and trainer coach? Well, I think trainer coach, coach I would put on Johan. Trainer would put on Chris. Advisors could be, uh, you know, ten different other people. Are there that many other people that are were advisors to you? Let's say during the 2001 to 2004 time period. Sure. With respect, I don't to know. If there's ten, but there were okay. a lot. With respect to the actual preparation for and the racing, as opposed to say financial advisors. No, 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 advisors. no. But, you know, yeah, in and around winning the tour. Okay. Would it be fair to say that of those advisors, that Dr. Ferrari was the most significant one to you? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd be fair to say. Okay, can you give me one who you felt an advisor who you felt was more significant to your training? Well, it's, it just depends. I mean, you could say somebody, the, the, the you know, the, the people at the wind tunnel who design the position and the equipment in and around the time trials are the most important in terms of true cost and true savings. Uh, 
you could say that your massage therapist who gives you massage every day is the most important. I'm sure they all think they're the most important. Okay, fair enough. Uh, how frequently did you go see Dr. Ferrari between the 99 and 2003 time period? Um, not very often. A few times a year, six times a year, ten times a year? Maybe a few times a year. I'm sorry, say that again. Maybe a few times a year. And, and how would you set these up? Would, would, would you contact him? Would he tell you time to come see him? How does that work? Call him. Now, when you, when you started going to see Dr. Ferrari in the mid-90s, what were the reasons why you wanted to use him? Well, other than he had a lot of experience, had been in cycling for a long time, or actually been in endurance sport for a long time, um, had heard very positive things about him and his knowledge of cycling, really the numbers of cycling other than that. That's about it. Were you aware of, of uh, did you believe at that time we started going to see him in the mid-90s that he had a, what would be considered a bad or unpopular reputation? Oh, uh, I, I think I think in those days, anybody who, who rode fast or performed well had a questionable reputation, which hasn't changed to this day. Mr. Andrew testified in his deposition that he, he that you recommended he use Dr. Ferrari. Is that true? I recommended that Frankie train smarter. I never specifically said you should go see Ferrari. Okay. Did you recommend to any of your teammates that they should use Dr. Ferrari? I recommend that they all train smarter. When you say train smarter, tell me what you mean. Use better training programs, train smarter. I don't, I don't know how else to describe that. They can go wherever they want to go. They can use whoever they want to use. Did, did you ever discuss what you were doing with Ferrari with your other teammates, Tyler Hamilton, Frankie Andrew, well, Kevin Livingston? If you're on the road, if you're on a training ride together, it's pretty obvious the types of intervals you're doing or the types of work you might be doing. But that uh, that would be like saying, you know, if Chris recommends this or Johan thinks this is a good idea based on his experience because he didn't race that long ago. When, when, when you went to see Dr. Ferrari, let's, let's stick with the 99 to 2003 time period, uh, uh, where would you meet him? Would it be in Italy? Um, a mix of both, either Italy or in South France. And, and can you describe for me what kinds of things you would do with him? Just a test, a physical test. Like what? I mean, would it, would, would it involve writing or? Writing. Right. Did it involve analysis of your blood or your, your physiological makeup? Um, well, you'd weigh yourself so you get your body weight. Um, lactate testing. Of course, like any physiological test. Were, were there results that were written from these tests that you could see? Uh, yeah, you have to write down the level, or, you know, the, the intervals and the levels. Would, would he recommend nutrition or other things like that? He's very particular about nutrition. Uh, not, uh, there was never anything written down, anything specific with regards to nutrition. But body weight being the most important thing, Probably the most important thing in cycling. Would he recommend um, vitamins or other supplements no. to take? Um, Mr. Gorski testified in his deposition that, that he uh, saw you or met Dr. Ferrari and you at a training session in Austin. I think he, he, he pointed to the approximate 2000 time period. Do you mm -hmm. recall that? Uh, I don't recall it, but I. I I wouldn't deny that, no. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, it's uh, also been said by others that uh, you had uh, Dr. Ferrari not stay where the others were staying, that they were at the Four Seasons Hotel, and you had him stay someplace different. Do you recall if that's true? Uh, he's been here more than once, so I don't always recall where he stayed. I know that many times he stayed with the team. We haven't always stayed at the Four Seasons. We stayed at Barton Creek. Um, but uh, 
if you, what you're trying to say is we were trying to hide him, that, that's absolutely not true. Well, okay. well there, ha there have been allegations that you tried to either conceal or not disclose your training relationship with Dr. Ferrari. Are those untrue? Those are untrue. I've never denied that.